I have 15 math questions, and if you know the answers to all of these, your math is better than 80% of the people in the world. In other words, you are definitely a global math professional. So here is how this is going to work. I'm going to show you a math question with three choices, and it's your job to pick the right answer. And you should be able to identify the answer uh, pretty quickly. I'm talking about less than five seconds if you understand the math. Now, we're not going to use calculators, but if you want to use a piece of paper and pencil, that is fine. We'll start the quiz with five basic math questions. Then we'll move on to five basic algebra questions. And then finally, we will see five basic geometry questions. Okay, so let's start with question number one. Which is equivalent to the fraction 30 over 50? A, the decimal point 35, B, the fraction 3 fifths, or C, the fraction 5 thirds? Okay, so the correct answer is B, the fraction 3 fifths, because we can factor out a 10 in both the numerator and denominator. In other words, 30 is the same thing as 3 times 10, and 50 is the same thing as 5 times 10. So when you have like factors in the numerator and denominator, you can cross cancel. And what is left is the simplified fraction. So moving on to question two, the square root of nine is equal to A, three, B, nine, or C, 81. The correct answer is A, the square root of nine is equal to three. The square root of a number is a number such that when you multiply it by itself, you get back to the number underneath the square root. So the square root of nine is three because three times three is equal to nine. Okay, moving on to question three. Which mathematical operation will you do first in this problem? A, will you do the addition first? B, will you do the division first? Or C, will you do the multiplication first? Okay, the correct answer is B, which is the division. And the reason why this is the case is the order of operations. And you can remember the proper order of operations in mathematics with uh, this little acronym right here called PEMDAS. And this is a checklist that goes from left to right. So in a math problem, if you have any parentheses, you will start there. Of course, in this problem, there are no parentheses. So we move on to our next step, E, which stands for exponents. So if you have a power like two to the third power, this little number up uh, there is the exponent. So we don't have any power, so we move on to M and D, any multiplication and division. And the way this works is we're going to do whatever we see first from left to right. So here we have division. This is the first thing that we see from left to right. So this is our first step. Okay, question four. So we have seven twelfths plus one six. What is this equal to? A, 8 over 6, B, 8 over 12, or C, 9 over 12? The correct answer is C, 9 twelfths. So when we add and subtract fractions, these bottom numbers, the denominators, must be the same or common. So in this case, the lowest common denominator is 12. So we need to change this 6 into a 12 by multiplying it by a 2. But if we're going to do that, we also have to multiply the numerator by a 2. So the numerator here becomes 2, and the denominator down here becomes 12. So now we have the fraction 2 over 12. And when we have common denominators, we can simply add the numerator. So that's going to be 7 plus 2, or 9. So the final answer is 9 over 12. Okay, this is our last basic math question, question 5. So 4 divided by 2 times negative 2 is equal to A, 1, B, negative 1, or C, negative 4. The correct answer is C, negative 4. Okay, so we have division and multiplication. So we have to consider the order of operations, or PEMDAS, to see what we do first. So again, when we have both multiplication and division in a problem, we're going to do whatever we see first from left to right. So that is the division. So 4 divided by 2 is 2, but this is a positive 2. So we have a positive 2 times a negative 2, and a positive times a negative is negative. 
So two times negative two is negative four. So hopefully you did pretty well with that basic math section. Now let's take a look at five basic algebra questions. And remember, no calculators. So this is our first basic algebra question, question six. The solution to the equation 3x minus one equals eight is A, three sevenths, B, three, or C, negative 27. The correct answer is B, x is equal to three. So what we have here is a basic linear equation. And to solve for x, all we have to do first is add one to both sides of the equation, then add down in a column manner. So three x plus nothing is three x, negative one plus a one is zero, and this is gonna be equal to eight plus one, which is nine. So now that we have the equation, three x is equal to nine, to solve for x, all we have to do is divide both sides of the equation by three, so x is going to be equal to nine divided by three or three. Okay, question seven. X squared is equal to four. What is X equal to? A, positive and negative two. B, positive two. Or C, negative two. The correct answer is A, positive and negative two. So what we have here is a basic quadratic equation and quadratic equations will always have two solutions. So to solve for x, all we have to do is take the square root of both sides. So the square root of x squared is x, and the square root of four in this case is both a positive and negative two, because a positive two times a positive two is a positive four, and negative two times a negative two is also a positive four. Okay, question eight. One over two to the negative two powers equal to a positive four, b negative one fourth, or c negative four. The correct answer is a a positive four. When you have a power with a negative exponent and you want to make that exponent positive, all you have to do is take the entire power and move it to the opposite side of the fraction bar. So we can take this two to the negative two and put it up in the numerator and the exponent becomes positive. In other words, this becomes two to the positive two power, which is two squared or a positive four. Okay, question nine. The square root of x to the fourth, all of this to the third power is equal to a x to the fifth, b x to the sixth, or c x to the seventh. The correct answer is b, x to the sixth. So we have to start with the square root of x to the fourth. This is equal to x squared, because x squared, remember the square root is that thing, a number or a variable, such that when you multiply it by itself, you get back to the answer. So x squared times x squared is equal to x to the fourth. x squared is two x's, multiplying by another two x's, we have four x's or x to the fourth. So again, the square root of x to the fourth is x squared. So this expression really is x squared to the third power. And anytime you have an outside exponent or power to an inside power, all we need to do is multiply the exponents. So this is going to be three times two or six, or our final answer, x to the sixth. So this is our final basic algebra question, question 10. So three over four is equal to 27 over x plus one. What is x equal to? A, nine, B, 35, or C, 36? The correct answer here is B, 35. Now the reason why that is the case is because we are dealing with something called a proportion. So we have the fraction three fourths and it's equal to another fraction. So if 27 is the numerator, well, the denominator needs to be 36 because the fraction 27 over 36 reduces down to 3 fourths. So this entire denominator, the value down here needs to be 36, but we have x plus one. 
So we're looking to solve for x. So x plus 1 is 36. So x is 35 because 35 plus 1 is 36. Now, before I finish, take a quick second and consider hitting that subscribe button. This really does help my channel grow on YouTube. And the whole reason I want my channel to grow on YouTube is so I can reach as many people as possible and help them in mathematics. I look at every person that uh, has subscribed. Now, by the way, if you have subscribed to my channel, thank you so much. But if you do subscribe to my channel, I consider all of you like students of mine. So I really try to be conscientious and post high quality math content. And my channel covers everything from basic math to advanced math like calculus and everything in between. Now, if you need math support, if you really need to learn mathematics, you definitely have to check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. And if you are going to subscribe, make sure to hit that bell notification as well so you can get alerts when I post a new video. So let's start the final section of this quiz and take a look at five basic geometry questions. Again, no calculators. All right, so question 11. So given this triangle with lengths 3, 4, and x, what is the length of x? Is it A, 5, B, 7, or C, 12? The correct answer is A, 5. Now, this type of triangle is called a right triangle, and that's indicated by this little symbol right there. That means that this is 90 degrees. And what we have is something called a Pythagorean triple. So the length here is going to be 3, 4, 5. But we can verify this using the Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Now, the longest side of a right triangle is always c. So if we square the shorter sides, that's going to be equal to the square of the longest side or the hypotenuse. So in other words, 3 squared plus 4 squared is going to be equal to x squared. So 3 squared is 9 plus 4 squared is 16. That is going to be equal to x squared. So 9 plus 16 is 25. So 25 is going to be equal to x squared. So to solve this equation, all we have to do is take the square root of both sides. So x will be equal to 5. Okay, so let's move on to question 12. So given this triangle right here, how many degrees is this angle? So this angle is 100 degrees. This angle is 30 degrees. What is this angle x degrees equal to? Is it A, 50 degrees, B, 60 degrees, or C, 45 degrees? The correct answer is A, 50 degrees. Now, the sum of the angles in any triangle is always equal to 180 degrees. So if we have 100 here and 30 here, we have 130 degrees. So if we subtract that away from 180 degrees, the balance right here must be 50 degrees. All right, moving on to question 13. What is the area of this circle with a radius of 3? Is it A, 3 pi, B, 6 pi squared, or C, 9 pi? The correct answer is C, 9 pi. So the formula for the area of a circle is area is equal to pi r squared, where r is the radius of the circle. And the radius is the length from the center of the circle that goes out to the edge. In this case, it's 3. So all we have to do is plug it into this formula. So that's going to be pi times 3 squared. Uh, 3, again, is our radius. So 3 squared is 9. So this is going to be 9 times pi or 9 pi. Okay, moving on to question 14. What is the angle measure of this line? Is it A, 0 degrees, B, 360 degrees, or C, 180 degrees? The correct answer is C, 180 degrees. So when we form an angle, we actually form it from a vertex, a point, with two rays emanating from that point. So for example, from this point, we can have a ray 
and this angle, for example, could be 30 degrees. So we have the vertex and this array right here. So the way we measure an angle is from one ray to another. But as we increase this ray, we'll keep this one the same, we can go up to 90 degrees, and then obviously we can continue to add more degrees to this angle. So this angle, for example, could be like 140 degrees, and then ultimately this ray will form a complete straight line, and that has the angle 180 degrees. So let's finish up with question 15. If we take this image and reflect it across the y-axis, the resulting image will look like A, this triangle, B, this triangle, or C, this triangle. The correct answer is B, the reflection will look like this. So we're going to reflect this triangle across the y-axis. Basically, we're going to construct the mirror image over on the other side of the y-axis. And this will uh, have the same distance at each one of these points. So the actual image will be something like this. So did you know all 15 math answers? Well, that is truly amazing. If you did, congratulations. But whatever your score is, you should be proud of yourself for taking this quiz. And hopefully you learned something. And if this video helped you out in some small way, or if you enjoyed it, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you need additional help in mathematics, make sure to check out all my videos on my YouTube channel or my full main math courses. You can find links to all of that in the description of this video. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.